Hello and welcome. If you'd like to get started with the Unity Perception package and creating synthetic image data in the Unity engine, then this video is for you. I did a couple of tutorials some time ago, but in the meantime, not only the package has been updated, but also the interest in synthetic image data has grown a lot. And that means more and more people get in touch with the Unity engine that have no background in game development. So this tutorial is specifically for you. I'm taking a real slow pace on this tutorial so you can follow along each step and understand what the different components of the Unity Perception Package mean and do. I will also update my tutorial on the randomizer, but I'm very interested what you try to achieve with the Unity Perception Package and what kind of questions you have. So please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss the other tutorials. So without further ado, let's get started. The first step is to install Unity if you haven't done so already. So go to unity.com download and then under download the Unity Hub, select your platform. With the Unity Hub, you manage your Unity installations and Unity projects. To install an editor version, go to installs and then you can install your editor. I'm using Unity version 2020.3. Then go to projects and select a new project. Select the editor version that you want and Unity Perception either requires the universal render pipeline or the high definition render pipeline. So I'm selecting the URP template and then you need to assign a project name. I'm calling it Perception Tutorial. And then hit create project. So after the Unity editor started, we have to install the Perception package. Go to Windows and then Package Manager. This will bring up this window and you can plug it in here. And Unity Perception is still in preview mode, so we have to install it from a Git repository. Click the plus and add package from Git URL. And then enter com.unity.perception. And press add. After the installation finished, I install the tutorial files that come with the Unity Perception package. Before you can use the Perception package, there's one more configuration step you have to apply. Go to the Settings folder and then select the Forward Renderer. And on the Renderer features, add the Ground Truth Renderer feature. The Render Pipeline is the process of generating images from all the objects in your world. And this renderer feature puts a hook in the process that allows you to write additional information like segmentation data. Now let's start with an empty scene to get step by step into the Unity Perception package. Go to Scenes and then right click Create Scene. I call it Tutorial, press Return and then open it up. I don't want to save the sample scene and now you have basically an empty scene and you have two main windows you have the scene window and the game window and i'm placing the game window next to it so it's easier to see what's going on the scene window contains all the objects in your world and the game window is what the camera sees the hierarchy contains all the game objects a game object is more or less just a container if you click on one, then in the inspector window, you see the different components. And each game object has a transform that basically defines the position and rotation and scale in this scene world. Then you can have different components like the camera component on a game object or the light component on this light. Components either add logic to a game object or a visual representation. Let's take a look at an example. Go to the samples perception folder and open the tutorial files and then go down to the foreground objects, phase one, prefabs. Prefabs are basically reusable game objects. And I'm selecting this green tea object and drag it over into the scene. This adds this bottle to the scene and you also see it appears in the camera window. Now in the scene view, if you hit F, then you can focus on this object and you can, for instance, rotate around it. Now this game object has different components. For instance, it has this mesh filter. If you select this mesh, this is 
the mesh of the bottle. And then you have the mesh renderer and one main part is it has the material. And the mesh renderer projects this material onto the mesh so that appears like a three-dimensional bottle in the scene and in the camera window. This bottle also has a labeling component. This is part of the Unity Perception package and we come back to it later. You can move this object around in the scene. You can rotate it by clicking up here. So you can rotate it in the different directions and you can scale it up and down. And you see that affects the transform up here, but you can also change the transform directly up here, for instance, by changing the X value. Later on, the perception randomizers will change position and rotation through code to randomly position the objects in the world space. Now let's put the scale back to the original value of seven. And the rotation back to minus 19, zero and zero. Now we want to use Unity Perception to generate images of our bottle that we later can use to train our computer vision model. Go to the main camera. We need to add a component that's called Perception Camera. The Perception Camera is the component that generates the images as well as the annotations and writes them to the file system. So to get rid of this warning down here, go to Edit Project Settings and another pop-up comes up and then go to editor and disable asynchronous shader compilation. Go back to the inspector and you see the warning is gone. Now let's look at the different parameters. First of all, you have a check mark for show labeler visualization that enables an overlay on the image in the editor to show the different labels. We will see this in a moment. Then you have the option to save camera RGB output to file system. I'm disabling this for the moment. As long as you're testing, you don't really want to generate and write out the images to the file system. The location of the output is not defined on the component, but in the project settings. So go to the project settings and then you have the perception here. And then you have the base path. And then you can select a different path than the default path. So I'm choosing a folder that I've created beforehand. Go back to the inspector and then you have the capture trigger mode. By default is set to scheduled and that means that the images are captured automatically. Here you have the simulation delta time that defines that every 0.0166 seconds an image is taken. This corresponds to 60 frames per second. By default, it starts with the first image directly if you start the scenario, and then you can define the number of frames between captures. That means, in this case, every frame an image is taken. But for instance, you could use the Unity physics system to simulate your objects falling to the ground, and you want to wait until your objects come to rest and then capture the image. In this case, you would set your frames between capture to a non-zero value. If you already have done some game development in Unity, you probably know the concept of time.delta time and time.fixed delta time. But there's an additional time that you probably haven't heard of, and this is time.capture delta time. And this is what this parameter is about. And if the time.capture delta time is set to a non zero value, then the time.delta time will be set to this non zero value. In other words, you decouple your simulation from the wall clock. And in this way, you make your results reproducible on any other computer. The other trigger mode is manual. This allows you to manual capture image through your code. But as a beginner, you probably stick to scheduled. So where do you set the resolution of your generated images? Well, it depends whether you run your simulation in the editor or as a compiled executable somewhere on a server. If you run your simulation in the editor, the resolution is defined by your output window. So up here, go to this dropdown and you have some predefined resolutions or you can define your own and just define the width and the heights up here. So I'm selecting for instance, 1280 by 720. So each image will be generated in this resolution. But for instance, you can also have a much lower resolution like 200 by 200 pixel. In the other case, 
if you run your simulation as an executable, then you have to go to project settings and then player. You have here the resolution. Under full screen mode, you have to go to windowed and then you can select your width and height of the output. Let's go back to the inspector and move this to the side so we have a little bit more space. Now let's adjust the camera so we can see the object a little better in the output. Set camera and then field of view, just reduce it and we put the camera in the middle vertically and now we can better see what's going on in our image. Now we want to tell the perception camera which objects to label and which metadata to generate. Each object that you want to track needs a labeler component. So go to your object over here, minimize this, and then you have this labeling component. And you have two options. Either you manually assign the labels or you use an automatic labeling scheme. So if you use automatic labeling, you can either use the asset name, the file name with extension or use the assets folder name. If you disable automatic labeling, you see the prefab has already an added label, but you can add multiple labels to, for instance, represent a hierarchy like drink, green tea and then the specific product name. In this case, I stick to the simple label that's already has been inside. Now go back to your main camera. Close the camera itself, the transform, we don't need this. Down here, you have the option to add camera labelers. So if you add plus, then you have predefined labelers that come with a perception package. And let's start with a simple bounding box 2D labeler. And then you see the annotation ID. That's the name that will appear in the metadata file later on. And then you have the ID label config down here, which is currently empty. And this label config tells the system which labels in the image to look for and to generate the corresponding bounding box in this case. Go over to your assets folder and then create perception ID label config. And we name it tutorial ID label config. And in the inspector you see currently there are no added labels. We have this drink green tea i2n and if I select add this label you will see it appears up here and this means whenever the system will find this object in the image it will generate the corresponding annotation. So go back to the main camera and now we have the option to select this little dot here and then select tutorial ID label config. Now, if I hit the play button, let's see what happens. Let's pause. So what you see is we have the image, but we also have an overlay generated that represents in this case, the bounding box around this object, including the label that the system has found. Let's stop it again and let's add another labeler. So let's add the semantic segmentation labeler. Again, we need label config. Go over to your assets, create perception semantic segmentation label config. Looks very similar. We select our drink green tea label and the segmentation labeler defines a mapping from a label to a color. The sky color or everything that's not a labeled object will be black. And then you can define a color for each label. Let's go back to the main camera, select the label config and let's run again. So first of all, we have our bounding box as before, but also we have this blue overlay that was generated by the segmentation labeler. This overlays are generated by this option here. So if I deselect it and press play, you will see nothing is generated on the image. Let's add another labeler, take the 3D bounding box. Now we can reuse the ID labeler that we already have. Just assign the tutorial ID label config and start. Now it's not so much different, but now if I select the object over here, focus on it and I start rotating it, then you see we have the two different bounding box. We have a 2D bounding box around the whole object and we have the 3D bounding box that's displayed in green. So let's see what kind of data we get. For that, 
go back to the main camera and then we switch on the camera output. Just start. Now let's go over here. Rotate this a little so get different image. Stop again. Go back to the main camera and then show folder down here. This will open the folder where the images have been generated. And then you see the different subfolders. And here we have the RGB folder. And if I select one, you see here is the generated image. And so far we haven't told the system how many images to generate. So every second it will generate 60 images for us as long as the system runs. And there's not much variation because we haven't randomized the position or rotation. But at the end I've manually rotated the image so here you see that different images have been generated. And here you have the folder with the semantic images and this is how they look like. Everything that's not a labeled object is black and then you have our blue bottle. And if I go down here you see in this case the bottle has been rotated. And the bounding box information that's here in this captures JSON file. So if you scroll down here you see that's the file name, the format, and then you have this 3D bounding box here. And you have your 2D bounding box here. Now let's look at how we can make our scenario a little more interesting through using randomization. Go over to your hierarchy, create empty, and rename it to scenario. And on the inspector, add a component called fixed length scenario. Now the scenario component controls how many images are generated and how the objects in the image are randomized. By default the scenario creates 100 different images. By default each iteration is only one frame long. That means every frame the randomizers are reset and the objects are positioned anew. So only if you employ some kinds of dynamics you probably need to increase the frames per iteration beyond one. Let's Reduce the iteration count to 10 and add a randomizer that comes with a section package and we are using the rotation randomizer. Let's make this a little bigger and then you see for each of the rotation axes x, y, z you can define what kind of distribution you want to have for the randomization and the limits for the angles. If I play the scenario you see nothing happens. The reason is we haven't told the system which objects to randomize. And Unity Perception uses so-called tags to identify the objects that you want to randomize. Select your object here. We have our labeling component, but we need to add another component and that's called the rotation randomizer tag. So if I now play my scenario, you see two things. First of all, the object is rotated randomly and the other thing is the scenario stops automatically. Because we have set it to 10 iteration, that means after 10 images the system stops. Let's check the output, go to main camera, then show folder. It will always show the folder of the last run. So let's open the image folder and you see we have 10 images in here and each image has the bottle with a different rotation. Now let's see how we can randomize the position. Go to your scenario and then add a randomizer, perception, foreground object placement randomizer. Now we have to put it up here because the randomize run in order. So first we want to place our object and then we want to randomly rotate it. Now we don't want just to generate image from our single bottle but from the different object that comes with the sample package. Down here go add folder and then we have our samples folder. Phase one. You can select the prefabs folder, choose. And then you see we now have 10 different objects prefabs added here. Now we need to define where in the world the objects are spawned. So we have the depth that's the Z component or Z component. We leave it to zero and then we have the placement area. So this is the X, Y plane. So let's put it to five and five for instance. But for the rotation randomizer to be effective on all the different prefabs, we have to add the rotation randomizer tag to them. So let's go to samples, perception, 
foreground image prefabs. Now you can select them all and add component rotation randomizer tag. I disable my original bottle here because now the placement is done by the randomizer. Before I hit the play button, I hit the pause button so I can step frame by frame through my scenario. Hit play, go one frame, and now you see we have different objects in different location and with different rotations. But you also see only our original bottle is labeled. This is because we haven't added the labels of the other objects to our label configs. So let's fix this. Go to assets, then our tutorial ID label config, and then add all the missing labels to your label config. We also have to do this for the semantic segmentation labels. So just add them. And you see now that for each different label, the system provides a different color. Let's try it out. Hit pause, play, and now you see each of the object is labeled. Unpause, run the whole scenario, go to the main camera, show folder. Now you see the different images with multiple objects in it. And also in the segmentation, you have different colors for the different objects. Now the last step is to randomize the background. Right now it's pretty uniform, but we want to replace some objects that disguise our machine learning system, because right now it's pretty easy to identify the different objects. For that, the sample package comes with some background objects. So we have some prefabs in here, and if you put some in your scene, you see it's completely white object and the other objects are also just very simple geometries like cylinders or spheres with a white material on it. But you have a different folder here with different background textures. You see avocado, kiwi, lime and so on. And what the randomizer later on does is it puts different textures on these simple objects. So just to give you an idea, here we have the material and we have a texture field. So let's take one of the textures and put it in here. And then you see here the object has a different texture and I can put another one on it. So let's delete it, go to your scenario and then we need to add a, another randomizer and that's background object placement randomizer. So put it to the top because we first want to spawn our background objects. Now, as with the foreground objects, add a folder, go to the samples, background objects, prefabs, choose. Now we want to place the objects behind our foreground objects. So let's say three meters behind. And then you can have multiple layers. I will show you this in a moment. Separation distance and let's say six by six. And before we add other randomizers, let's see how it works. Hit play. Now you see all the objects have the last texture I put on the material. So don't worry about that. But if we go into this scene view here, you see see two things. First of all, we have these two layers, that's the layer count. And then we have the separation distance. That means there is no overlap between the background objects and still a lot of uniform background. So let's lower the separation distance as well. And you see right now the objects are not rotated because we didn't have added the rotation tag to these objects. So let's fix this. Let's add three layers put the separation distance to, let's say, dot five. Go to the prefabs, select them all. I'm removing and add component rotation randomizer tag. Hit play. Here we see we have a lot of background objects overlapping, maybe a little bit too much, and we need to increase the width of the placement area. So stop. So I adjusted the parameters a little bit. You can play around with them and fit them to your needs. So let's add a randomizer for the textures of the background object. 
add randomizer, perception, and then we have the texture randomizer. We want only the background object to be randomized. So we have to put the randomizer before the foreground objects are placed. Then let's add the folder. Samples, perceptions, preview. Background textures, you can choose the top level and it will find all the textures in the subdirectories. And before it works, we need to add the texture randomizer tag to the background objects. So go select all the background objects, add component, texture randomizer tag, hit pause and play and let's see how it looks like. And now you see in the background we have the different objects with different textures. In the foreground, we have different objects and the different annotations like the bounding box, the 3D bounding box and the segmentation labels. Let's check the output, show folder. So we have the different images and we have the different segmentations. If your image is too dark, you can do two things. First of all, you can increase the intensity of the light, three to two. And the other thing is, Depending on your scenario, you want to have or not have shadows. So if you don't want to have shadows, then you can select the shadow type to no shadows. So I hope this is a good starting point for your own project to get started. <music>